Hey everyone, and welcome to Carrie's Garage. On this episode, we're finally going to check out my 2019 Volkswagen GTI. So here's my 2019 Volkswagen GTI Rabbit Edition. This car is actually a special edition car that was released for 2019. We'll go over a little bit of some of the special features, not really features, but a couple of the things the car has that makes it unique. One of which is the color. This is Cornflower Blue. There was only 1,000 of uh, these available in this color. Half of them were manual and half of them were the uh, DSG, SMG, whatever Volkswagen calls it. So I did buy this car brand new. The original owner got it from the dealership. Kind of a, an interesting story. I'll go into that here in a minute. But overall, I really did fall in love with this generation GTI. It's just such a good looking car. And overall, really fun. And it pretty much does everything that I really need needed a car at the time. When I decided to buy a new car, I knew GTIs were fun. I really wanted a manual that was kind of important to me and a brand new car with a manual is kind of not as easy to find as you would think within certain parameters. But for this particular car, some of the unique features are the wheels. I always get the name of these mixed up, but these are a, uh, a shiny black Pretoria wheels. I think that's how you say it. Uh, the mirror caps here are painted black. It's got kind of this little sport spoiler touch right here. And it has, if I remember right, R brakes, uh, plaid interior, and a little special um, tag on the seats I'll show you here in a minute. Go ahead and start off up front, take a look at the engine. Really not much to see. I mean, it's modern cars. And no matter what I do, I really, really need to do a really good detail on this car. and do a good buff on it. I wash it every so often, but it's like I said in previous videos, I live down a dirt road. Everything I own always is really dirty. I try and keep this car really clean, but you know, it gets kind of tough sometimes, but I need to actually have somebody do a detail on it, but let's take a look. Engine base probably, yeah, not too bad. I wiped it down a little bit. It was kind of dusty, but we've got the two liter four cylinder turbocharged TSI engine. I think it makes around 228 horsepower. I will double check those and I'll put them here in the video. We've got the uh, LED headlights that level up down. They, they turn with the steering wheel. They're fairly bright. They actually sometimes are a little bit too bright, honestly. I have people flashing their high beams at me all the time. Got the LED fog lights. And this does have the uh, collision avoidance autonomous braking for emergency situations, which Every once in a while, I don't know why, it kind of is neurotic and thinks I'm going to hit somebody and no one's around. So I've asked the dealer about it, but honestly, the dealer that I got this car from, they're kind of useless. I actually had a really big problem with them on my last oil change, so I will never be bringing it back to them ever again. And I'm just either going to do the oil changes myself or bring them to an independent shop. Now, one thing to note about this car is it is 100% stock as it was the day I bought it. It has a fairly substantial warranty. I don't want to avoid that. I don't want to run into any problems. I mean, I don't really have had no issues with the car, but I would like to put an exhaust on it at some point, make it a little bit louder. But for now, it does everything I need it to. I hit the button, it starts, runs, drives great, and it gets me to where I need to go. All right, before we take a look at the interior and some of this stuff, let's take a look at the back. How you open up the hatch on this is kind of entertaining. It does have the cargo system, which is these little magnetic things. This is a IBM Selectric typewriter. I collect typewriters or so. I've got a few of them. I need to bring this one to a repair shop and have them look at it, but we'll talk about that. But it is really nice because stuff won't slide around. It does have the, the ski pocket there through the seats. I've never used it. I don't ski. I've never skied. I'd like to, but never have. Um, the back area here is actually really quite nice. I fit a lot of stuff that back here. You throw the seats down, you'd be amazed at the amount of stuff I can fit in this car. Here's the back seat area in that manila envelope right there. There's actually some really cool stuff I'm going to show you guys. The seats is pretty much 
what sold me on the car. When I opened it up and I saw the plaid interior with the red stitching, I just fell in love with it. Plus the blue color was just absolutely amazing and that's when I knew I had to have it. I don't know if it'll show in the video, but I do have three dogs, so no matter what, everything I own, everything always has dog hair in it somehow, even if I vacuum, try and clean it up as best as I can. So there's little bits of dog hair here and there, but let's go ahead and get in the interior. Let's take a look. And this one does also have the um, the remote fob where you don't use the key for anything. There's really no keyholes, one on the outside, and it's got the touch pad on the outside where you lock it, put your hand in the door, you uh, unlock it. So yeah, it's a fairly, fairly simple, comprehensive dashboard. You got your light switch, dimmers, you know, rev counter, speedometer, got the digital display. You can see it has 24,359 miles. I have put all but seven of those on this car. I'll tell you about that here shortly. Got the nice GTI leather wrapped steering wheel with the red stitching. Got the controls for cruise control, radio, the touch to speak, but that only works for the Android Auto Apple CarPlay thing. Got the infotainment system, which is fairly decent. I really wish it had the nav with the, the larger screen and serious radio, but this one really works fairly decently. It's got the heated seats, decent climate control, and uh, you know the, the golf ball, golf shifter. That one's always fun. Got push to start button there. Interior accents are, it's kind of a cool look. And one thing I absolutely love about it is it has the black headliner, which is something I really like. Having lighter colored headliners is just kind of eh to me on cars. And one of the other special things about this car, kind of gimmicky stuff, whatever you want to call it, is the rabbit tag. Let's go ahead and start it up so I can get some air conditioning going and then I'll tell you a little bit about the story and show you some of the things I have for it. Go ahead and turn the radio off. Oh. So one of my biggest pet peeves of everything in this car is the volume knob. I've heard a lot of people talk about this on this uh, on the Volkswagens that when you turn up the volume, the power button doesn't stay put. So I'm always adjusting it and I never change the volume with this. I always use the controls and steering because I hate when I look over and it's not up and down. And it's kind of a weird OCD thing, but also has a really cool analog looking clock when you have the radio off. Another thing it does have is uh, the mode button here. If we go up here, it has the eco, normal, sport, and custom. Um, if we go to custom, it'll kind of show you what you can change. You got steering, feel, sport. I have pretty much everything in sport. Front diff lock, driving system. One of the ridiculous things this car does have is engine sound. It actually has a sound generator uh, somewhere on the front firewall, I believe. And depending on what mode you have it in, it gets a little bit more grumbly sounding kind of on the inside of the car. I think it's ridiculous. I just have it to eco, so it's not really that loud, but everything else is sport because I like the way how it feels. I usually always leave it in custom. So kind of the backstory on the 2019 GTI Rabbit Edition. What Volkswagen decided to do is basically honor the 35th anniversary of the Rabbit GTI for 2019 and make this car. They only imported 3,000 to the United States. 1,000 were Cornflower Blue, which is what this car is. Another 1,000 were Urano Gray. Then there was 500 black and 500 white. Um, when I first saw the, this blue, this cornflower blue, I absolutely fell in love. And when I decided I wanted to buy one, to find, try to find one, there were only two in the state. Uh, there was one at a dealership that had the, the DSG and then this car. The, the deal actually kind of just fell together. It was absolutely fantastic how it really worked out. But when I, got, when I went to go see the car, I'll post some uh, pictures in the video, it had seven miles on it. They had literally just unwrapped it from plastic the afternoon before. I got it on a Saturday. It was in June of 2019. So it was at the very late end of the 2019 model year for the Volkswagens.
All right, so in this little folder, I told you I got some kind of cool stuff. So I, I still meaning to frame this, but here's the original window sticker. Golf GTI 2 liter turbo rabbit edition in cornflower blue with a Titan black and Clark plaid cloth interior. Another thing I got was this uh, printout that has my name on it under my finger and it was ta it talks about the very first uh, rabbit GTIs and it even came with this little emblem and some instructions to stick it onto the back. They never actually labeled any of these as rabbits for this market. They actually sent it to you and gave you instructions to put this emblem on the, the tailgate and they also sent this sticker with instructions of how to put it on the hatch. I never got around to doing it. Um, I actually have a friend of mine with a vinyl cutter and I'm gonna have him scan this and cut a new one for me and then I'll probably put it on the car. I don't know if I'll ever put the rabbit, rabbit emblem on there. I know I kind of like having all this original and complete. But yeah, it talks about uh, some of the special things about the car. Um, of course, you know, go online and blah, blah, blah. Then on the next page is Certification of Authentic German Engineering, aka they just gave me this little kind of cardboard printout saying what it is and uh, whatnot. It's I doubt those are real signatures, those are probably just really good um, printouts of it. But it was kind of, you know, neat to get all this stuff in the mail. I had the car for a couple of months, you know, a couple of thousand miles on it, and then I got this really neat care package from Volkswagen of North America with all the uh, GTI Rabbit Edition stuff on it. I know it's kind of gimmicky, but it was neat. You know, it's, it's kind of cool having a fairly limited production car, you know, one of a thousand in this color. I think there's three or four rabbits locally. Now, kind of the annoying thing that the brand new uh, Mark 7.5 GTIs, I think it's the Autobahn edition. I would have to double check in line. You can actually get a cornflower blue, but it doesn't have the plaid interior and it has a sunroof, which this doesn't have, which I didn't really want a sunroof. I've had too many of those break. So it is kind of annoying that they did introduce Cornflower Blue as a production color on the, I think it was the 21 GTIs. You know, kind of made us uh, rabbit people get a little bit annoyed being like, well, you know, they're kind of kills some of the special vibe of it. But there are certain things about the car that does make it unique that they just, they don't do on any of the other new ones. Well, let's go ahead and set up the camera on the inside and let's take it for a quick drive and kind of give you some of my impressions. Oh, uh, let me uh, show you this real quick. When I was in Chinatown many years ago, visiting a good friend of mine, we went to uh, some little shops and I got this little necklace because my sign is the rabbit, I guess. So I have own a rabbit and I found that. So I just thought it was really fitting to put it in here. All right. Well, let's go ahead and take the rabbit I don't even really call it a GTI very often. I do, but I always say, let's drive the rabbit. Cause I did own a rabbit once on memory lane. We'll get into when I had a 82 rabbit diesel pickup. That was a fun car, truck, whatever you want to call it. But this one is definitely a uh, very vastly improved from Volkswagens of the earlier years. That is for sure. Now for me, this car really embodies a lot of what I wanted. I like cars that are fun and sporty, but there does get to a point sometimes where you have too much power. It's really not usable. That's why a lot of the cars I have are just slow European cars that you can really push hard, have fun, you're not gonna get a huge amount of trouble. Yes, this car will go substantially quick. Um, but I don't really ever drive it that crazy or go that fast. But sometimes if I'm ever in a bad mood or have a stressed out day, you know, I'll kind of uh, zip around in a little bit. And it's, it's enough to put a smile on my face and put me in a much better mood, which is really what it's about. Now see if I can remember how to get out of this neighborhood. It's a little convoluted. So a lot of the stuff on the cars, like I said, it's fairly user-friendly it's a really nice platform the 
Android Auto, because I have an Android phone, I don't really do Apple stuff. The Android Auto works decently well. It can be a little glitchy sometimes, but for the most part, it works all right. Um, when I plug it in, sometimes it doesn't want to always communicate, and I got to kind of redo it. But it is nice being able to have that feature to plug in my phone, and it'll give me Google Maps, Waze, Sirius, Pandora, pretty much anything and everything I need without, you know, having the upgraded uh, nav system, which I do like the screen, the the big, I think it's the eight inch, like the glass screen with the nav and the Sirius radio. It does look a little bit nicer and I would really like to have that. And I've been trying to do some research to see what it would take to upgrade this. And parts are not cheap. I mean, you know, I'm used to my old hoopties and crap, you know, it's parts aren't that expensive but you know this car is only two years old so parts for this era car is uh they're definitely pricey that's for sure plus if i did do the upgrade on the radio i still have to find somebody to code it and i just you know for now everything works runs and drives works perfectly fine it has twenty four thousand miles on it so i'm just gonna leave it alone i have plenty of other vehicles to mess around with modify do whatever I want with so that's why this one just gets oil changes gas and I enjoy now I do not follow the Volkswagen mileage recommendation for oil changes on this car I have worked on too many Volkswagens over the years 1.8 liter turbos the two liters aren't really that bad those old those don't really care v6s some of the vr6s that people religiously followed the Volkswagen oil change interval and after a period of time you know taking off oil pans and looking at them and it was just it was it was disgusting it was absolutely amazing how gummed up the oil pans were pull the valve cover I don't really agree with 10,000 miles um, even with you know the modern synthetic oils and you know we live in a really dry hot climate so we have substantial temperature swings I mean it'll be 65 at night and it'll be 95 100 during the day so i always do 5,000 miles i use the volkswagen recommended Castrol zero w20 full synthetic and i pretty much religiously only run chevron 91 octane in this car my bmws only get chevron i don't know what it is about it but they just don't run right unless you run chevron fuel in those so i religiously always run chevron and it's always treated me really well. It's how they formulate the fuel or Tecron, I don't know. It's, it always works. I have been a believer for a long time, so I religiously use that also in this car. And it, it does great. Runs fantastic. I've only ever had one problem ever with this car, and it was actually a... They didn't technically call it a recall. It was a service needed or something. But when these were brand new, in 2019, they had a stalling problem that if you were at speed and you put it in neutral and you coasted, it would just stall, which had happened twice on this car. And it never really happened ever again. I did bring it to the dealership and they flashed it with the new software. I don't know. I've, I've, had, I've known people that had so many problems that they both they actually would buy the cars back kind of like with the, the TDI diesel gate problem but thankfully this one never really had any of those issues like I say it happened twice oops guess I'm getting a phone call oh well I'll call back um, only happened to me twice but no real problem since um, let's see what else See the cop shot. I get into it. Yeah, I mean, it's got enough pull. The little turbo spools up, makes some good noises, and the best part is it's fun. It'll get out of its own way. You know, you really get into it. It will go. It's not super fast. It's not the fastest thing around for sure. Uh, when it's really fairly cool outside and it's got some thick air, sometimes it will lose traction on the front wheels. It's kind of annoying but I don't do street racing. I don't do anything stupid like that. So it's just, it's a fun car that 
you know, if I need to pass, if I'm on a two-lane road, or, you know, get up to speed quickly, it doesn't have a problem at all doing that. Now, the suspension, I mean, overall, everything, ooh, 996 Twin Turbo. Nice. Massive car ADD problems, see stuff, and Google and Ogle. I would love to get my hands on a 996 Turbo. Um, I know a lot of people really poo on the 996 Porsches. I love them. I've worked on so many of them. I've driven one. My dad has one. He's got a convertible, which we're going to borrow here soon and do a review on. But anyways, I digress. Um, the overall platform and chassis of this car, the suspension, it's fantastic. It's not super soft. I mean, I've, I've got the Lincoln if I want to drive around a boat. But it's also not, it's not too firm. You know, it's not like driving some uh, really crazy sports cars I've driven that when you hit a bump, you just like, oh my God, kill me. It just destroys your back. This one's got a really good blend of a firmer suspension that handles fairly well, but yet it's supple enough to where, you know, it's not beating you to death six ways a Sunday, which is fantastic. Like I said, overall in general, this is an amazing car. Great platform. I'm really glad I was able to get it, especially with the fact that, you know, I bought it with seven miles on it. Well, it had 32 miles on it when I bought it. When I went to the dealership to go look at it, it had seven miles when it was sitting out front and uh, they convinced me to go for a test drive because I wasn't even really gonna buy it. But we went for a test drive, went on the highway, drove around. I fell in love with it. We went back to the dealership. I signed all the paperwork, had 32 miles on it and I drove it home and I was over 24,000 miles ago. Oh, and one other thing I do want to do at some point is I would like to get a, a short throw shift kit for this. It's not really bad, but I mean, the, the throw on the shifter is a little bit more than I'd like. So I definitely would like to see if I can get something just to make it a little bit tighter. And as much as I like the golf ball, it's entertaining. I have been uh, looking around to see if I can get a different shift knob for it. Just kind of see maybe get something a little weighted I, I don't know I know there's a bunch of stuff out there but overall I don't have to change anything it's just a couple of things I want to do just for my own personal entertainment That'll wrap up the video for the 2019 Volkswagen GTI. Hope you guys enjoyed the little video, kind of starting to do the video, the review, and the driving tour all at the same time. You know, trying to make some good content for everyone. Thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate it, and see you next time.